Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the complete seal replacement on a Harder and Steenbeck Evolution Silverline airbrush. We've got uh, Dichtungssatz Komplett für Infinity, um, which is a sealing kit, complete for infinity, um, helpfully translated beneath. We've got a bit of water in there and if I press the air trigger you can see immediately what we've got the bubbles blowing back into the cup and it kind of sprays spits and spurts a bit but it does spray but of course with just air we've got bubbles blowing back into the cup and I read this out and it didn't register at the time but this says sealing kit complete for infinity this brush is an evolution silver line Harder and Steenbeck complete seal replacement, take two. Hi guys and welcome. Um, so here we are, uh, back to the Harder and Steenbeck Evolution complete seal replacement video uh, with the new seal set sent by um, aircraft.net, that's uh, air-craft.net, who is kind of my local airbrush spare supplier if you like um, by local I mean 85 miles away we now have the correct set which as you'll be able to see down here is uh, the Dichtungsschatz Komplett für Evolution und Grafo so complete sealing kit for the Evolution and the Grafo airbrushes with a range of seals as we see there so without further ado we are going to go ahead scooting close and strip down the brush. So the first thing we need to do to take the brush apart, we'll unscrew the rear section, we'll pull off the the tip, this is the pinch tip which is designed so that you can wipe the tip clean uh, for airbrush artist types and what have you, um, rather than the crown cap. While pulling back on the plunger we're going to unscrew the air cap and the air cap complete with the nozzle will come away as you can see there and then I can now let go of the plunger as you can see that brings the needle back forward unscrew the chucking nut push the needle forward draw it out of the front of the brush next step is to unscrew this assembly here, simply lift out the plunger and lever, complete as one assembly. Unscrew the quick release connector, unscrew the air valve, which is missing seals, and unscrew the paint cup. Pushing in this section here, fully unscrew and remove the needle chucking nut and then allowing this to slide forward the whole assembly comes out complete with the spring. If you buy a complete um, overhaul kit that will come with the springs as well. So you will get a spring for your air valve and a spring for, for this portion here in a complete overhaul kit as well as your seals but that's only if they're severely worn and they will last a good long long time so uh, I wouldn't worry unduly about that but that's that bit there the the only two bits that need further disassembly are the brass screw inside the body that you can see down there which is where the needle packing the Teflon needle packing is and the brass screw inside the air valve that you can see down there which is how you take the air valve assembly apart uh, inside of this is a little o-ring and inside of that is needle packing for that for both of those we will need a flat blade screwdriver you want a good fitting one and um, you want to go carefully because it's easy to chew up the soft brass you can buy for this one inside the body you can buy a specially made 
Harder and Steenbeck tool because this does have a wider slot than most. Um, you can buy a special made Harder and Steenbeck tool which has a, a piece of rod as well, much like this sticking out of the end, which will hold the whole assembler together including the needle packing so you can unscrew it and just pull the whole thing out. Um, quite handy but it's it's not the cheapest thing it's about seven or eight pound I think which for a tool that's specific for one job it's um, it's not the cheapest thing in the world but anyway we we'll take a screwdriver and carefully if I can try and do this while I'm on the camera carefully unscrew the brass screw in here being careful with this one because there is a spring, which is the return spring for the plunger. As you can see, and then there's your air valve and the O-ring on the air valve, and there's the air valve body. So that's the air valve disassembled. And the same situation with this, you'll have to excuse me, so I'm going to have to move this over here so that I can actually see what I'm doing here, because as I say, I don't want to damage the, the screw head on this. And then once you can feel that that's loose, which it felt like it was, but for some reason it's not. There we go. And there is the empty body, you can see where the needle passes through there. There is the worn Teflon needle packing, and there is the uh, the needle packing uh, brass screw. Uh, for anybody who's familiar with carburetors, um, you'll they will look very familiar because it looks very much like a, a jet, a brass jet in a carburetor. Uh, this was absolutely grubby when I got the airbrush, uh, when I had to take the whole thing apart to clean it and then this was caked in old dried paint. So, so there we go. So um, that's everything, that's the, that's the whole brush now completely in, um, in its component parts. And what we're going to do now is take this packet of seals, part number 123910, um, the Infinity was 126910, so depending on your airbrush, a few of the seals are different in each pack, hence the different part numbers. So we're going to take the appropriate seals out of here, replacing them on the brush, starting with the air valve assembly. So first of all, let's have a look at what we get in the kit. What we have here are two PTFE nozzle seals which fit on the nozzle to body connection. These two here, it's going to be very hard to tell from the video. It's going to be hard to distinguish between them. But these three seals and these two seals are a much shinier rubber. These two are quite a dull looking, almost gritty looking rubber. That's a very difficult to tell from the video uh, um, I can appreciate. But that's because these are the air cap sealing rubbers and they are made of a material called Viton which is solvent resistant. It's still a rubber o-ring but it's solvent resistant and this is typically the material that will be used to make o-ring seals for uh, fuel injection systems and fuel pumps in vehicles because it's solvent resistant whereas ordinary rubber will break down uh, if immersed in solvent it will swell, it will split, it will, it will degrade rapidly. Um, here we have a PTFE seal for the paint cup to airbrush body. Here we have a PTFE air valve seal. This one's PTFE because there's, um, there's possibility of paint and solvent leak back through the needle seal, which is this one here. And you'll notice that they're very, very similar, but they, this one is thinner with a larger hole and this fits in the top um, of the oops of the air cap which I've just thrown on the floor. I'll just retrieve so that fits in the top of there and This one is thicker uh, To allow you to compress it and the one it's replacing is That one there just to show you how badly 
the old one is compressed and damaged is uh, is that one there very very worn indeed so um, that one is your needle packing PTFE seal that's the one that fits inside this little brass uh, jet looking screw here and inside the airbrush body and the one that your needle passes through and you can tighten it down until it creates a little bit of drag and that's what creates the seal and of course being Teflon PTFE is solvent resistant and so that's the nozzle paint cup air valve needle seal air cap VTON this is the air air valve o-ring which is the little brass rod that you saw when we disassembled the unit that one there and that fits down here and that creates an airtight seal when the valve is closed under spring pressure this one here is for this part of the air valve and these three up at the top are center body seals so oh sorry and the one that I missed this one here the wide flat one looks like a tap washer this is for the quick release um, connector if you have one of those so that's your complete seal set that's what we get in the kit and the other set was similar uh, with with a couple with two or three different uh, air valve seals um, but that's essentially the kind of thing that you will get in your kit and it helps to lay them out and, and figure out which is which before you decide to go ahead and start putting the seals on so what I'm going to do just now is take out the seals that we're going to need for our air valve assembly which is this small one here this one here and this PTFE one here the thinner one with the larger central hole and this is going to make up the air valve assembly as a complete unit and we'll also do the uh, the quick release um, connector seal as well this this thick one so that gets those out of the way so we'll move on to that and we'll go back to the airbrush and we'll start assembling the air valve with its new seals so we're now going to replace the seals on the air valve assembly and uh, and replace the air valve assembly into the brush body and it should go without saying that make sure that all these components are completely spotless before you go ahead and replace all the seals if there is any evidence of paint or anything gummed up in there or what have you give it a good soak in cellulose or lacquer thinners if you're um, in the US um, and using cotton swabs and whatever else is handy give everything a really good clean out and allow that to dry for reassembly we first take the brass pin and the small o-ring the, the tiny rubber o-ring placing that over the pin push that all the way down and it needs to go over this little ridge uh, that you can see here so you will need to squeeze it over that but it shouldn't be particularly tight so you should be able to wiggle that down over there like so and that will float down there like that turning the air valve upside down so the large threaded part is there if you just drop that valve in that should drop all the way in and protrude from the top like so and then you take the brass screw and the spring replace the spring if you're if you're doing a complete um, service kit you'll get a replacement one of these springs and one of the larger springs that you get for the actual trigger so drop that in there taking your screwdriver screw that in carefully until it seats it doesn't need to be nipped up very tight remember brass is soft it will get chewed up easily and you don't want to do that so you literally just need to get it to seat and then just give it a gentle nip and that's all you need then give that a test push on the air valve and you should see that should spring down and spring back up firmly 
and the o-ring that you've refitted will fit just under here and that will seal it and stop air coming through the next thing you need to do is to take the larger rubber o-ring slip that down over the conical part and the thread and that will sit neatly in the little groove just there and finally taking the thinner of the PTFE seals with the slightly larger centre hole of the two that are in the packet this one is for the top of the air valve assembly if you um, if you just sort of tap onto that with your finger it will typically stick to your finger and then just seat that gently over the air valve give it a push down you can push the whole air valve down with your thumb there and that will help it seat nicely into there like so and I'll just give that a run round with the back edge of my fingernails just to seat that in nicely and that will provide a nice airtight seal which is also solvent resistant which will fit back into here and oops, show you that fit back into here and then your plunger fits down there which is where that will protrude so what we can do with this now this is reassembled so we can take the main body of the brush screw this into the brush by hand and just until it nips up and that's all you need you don't need to clamp anything on and wrench it tight or anything like that you've got the rubber seal there which is going to stop air leaking out of here you've got the teflon seal there which is going to stop any stray air going where it shouldn't and you've got the new o-ring seal there which is going to stop air coming up out of there when you release the trigger so you can test that and make sure it's working right by just dropping the trigger ball mechanism into there and giving that a, a prod and it should spring back up firmly as it does the next thing we are going to do is we're going to take the needle packing seal which is the thicker of the two seals if we get that onto the screen for you that's the thicker of the two seals with the thinner central hole as you can see there and this one is the one that the needle slides through like so and that should already be a fairly firm sliding fit which it is when you've put this in the brass screw and tighten it down you'll be able to nip it up you just tighten it until it's seated and no more then we'll slide the needle in and we'll use the needle like a feeler gauge just to nip that up and uh, and get that so that it's sealing well as it should unlike this sorry looking thing here which has been squashed and, um, and abused by uh, having paint run through it and what have you which has widened the hole and that's so thin it just simply will not compress anymore to create a seal so that one's uh, no good whatsoever so one of the easiest ways I've found to replace these seals is to actually use the needle like so and in this case where it sits inside this what you can do is see if it's a, a snug enough fit inside the brass screw to actually hold which it isn't so what we're going to do is I'm going to slide the needle in from the front of the airbrush body all the way out to the back and then pop that around the seal like so which will hold it in place then take the brass screw that looks like a jet and making sure you've got it the right way around Oop. with the thread at the rear like so pop that onto there and bring it forward and slide the needle forward until that seats down in the channel being very very careful that you don't sorry I'm just I'm trying to sort of show this but not damage my needle at the same time see if I can focus on this for you and drawing the needle down bring it right down into the airbrush body and then pull the needle forward so that it pulls out just enough sorry if that's gone out of uh, the shot just enough so that you can get your screwdriver down there and start the threads tightening up and then you know that your needle packing is well seated so 
once the threads have started tightening up you can draw out your needle and pop that aside safely so that it's not going to get damaged let's focus back down here and then I'm just going to screw that in until I feel its seat so and that's all you need initially because as you saw it was already a fairly firm fit once it's seated take your needle and again inserting it from the front of the airbrush you do this so that you don't damage the needle tip which is very delicate and easy to damage and then what you can do is slide that back and forward and you should feel a slight resistance now there's a slight resistance there it does need to be tightened up just a little bit more because it needs to have initially a little bit of drag so insert your screwdriver and just give it the tiniest tiniest nip and this goes for any airbrush with needle packing because you don't need to to really sort of wrench on it and and tighten it down more than about probably a sixteenth of a turn at a time maybe if that just until you feel a good amount of resistance now there that's quite a good resistance obviously this is this is going to be difficult to to see on the screen because you can't see the resistance of the needle but you will trust me when I say you'll be able to feel it and if you've ever used a feeler gauge that's the kind of feeling you're looking for when you're sliding a feeler gauge in between something and you get it you get that drag um, that's what you're looking for you're looking for it to you can feel the the Teflon seal around the needle you can feel that it's dragging on it but not enough that it will stop it and you've really got to force it through with thorough cleanings like in my other video it should last a good while before you need to um, before you need to do anything again with it and tighten it up it should take it it should be a good while the next thing we need to do is reassemble the um, oh regarding the air valve actually while I'm on it I might as well pop this back on and the seal for the quick release valve just simply pops into into there and then you just screw this onto the larger thread that's assuming you have a quick release valve what you may have instead is just a screw adapter on your airbrush hose so that's not a problem so what I'm going to do now is reassemble this uh, this central body portion here that uh, the needle chucking nut and slider is on so place the spring onto there again making sure this is all clean and spotless through through here and in here and and the chucking nut and what have you make sure this this spring is in good condition replaced if you've got a service set slide this in here and you'll notice this has got a hex shaped uh, head like a bolt and that will slot in there and hold in place so if you press that against the spring tension hold that in place while you screw on the chucking nut it doesn't have to be all the way down but just enough so that you've got some threads on there that it will hold at this point we take the large rubber o-ring that we mentioned that you've gotten that you've got three of in the kit and pop that over there so it sits in this recess in the front of the body just there like that and then placing that into the body well, actually what we'll do before we do that was we'll pop the um, the trigger in first of all with the groove at the flat edge and the and the ridges at the front make sure it seats in the indent so that you've got that spring and that the the bar is is behind is at the rear of it and then when you put this in this tapered front section will slot into the hole in the bar which hopefully you can see there like so and then we simply screw that in whoops screw that in hand tight against the o-ring again you don't need to wrench it down tight enough so that that will form a seal and you can see now that the trigger works and this pulls back and forth appropriately so taking your needle inserting it from the front of the airbrush and sliding it back slacken your chuck nut slide the needle right the way through with its newly found um, sort of tension there through the new seal and then draw it back 
so that the needle is completely drawn within the body. This will, this will make sure that you don't damage the needle tip when you do the nozzle and air cap. And then tighten up your needle chucking nut to make sure that won't go anywhere. Next thing we need to do is take the nozzle and the air cap. For the air cap, you need to take, oops, you need to take one of the Viton seals, the slightly greyish looking ones. And for the nozzle, we need the Teflon seal, which is the larger hard PTFE. Um, that's something I didn't mention. The, the air cap, the air valve and the, the needle packing one are a sort of softer PTFE. The nozzle is a, is a harder PTFE, it's a harder sort of plastic. So taking the nozzle, this simply pushes onto it. There's no direction, it's the same both sides. So apologies if that was off to shot there. So you just line that up, wiggle it on and push it on until it seats firmly on the nozzle like so. The Viton the rubber Viton o-ring, you take that and just wiggle it on across the threads, Oop, taking care that it doesn't ping off and disappear on you until it sits in the little recess just behind, behind this ridged section that allows you to screw it in. Pop the nozzle into the air cap and that will seat forward. And then take the whole assembly, whoops, have to forgive me fumbling here. It's quite difficult trying to make sure I've got this on the screen while I'm doing it. Taking the whole assembly, pop it onto the airbrush body and then screw that in until it seats. Just making sure that's nipped tight. Again, don't go too tight. You don't need to do that. Then we can take the pinch tip and slot that on. The crown cap will work in the same way. And then at this point, you can slacken off your chucking nut slide your needle forward and hopefully you can see there it's just coming out and you do that just until it seats and no more so when you feel it stop that's you tighten up your chucking nut and there you go that's that done take the rear part of the airbrush slide that on screw it into place if you wish to do so, you can adjust your um, your needle stop. The more you screw this forward, this will stop the needle being drawn back. So you can use that to control fine lines and such. I find it really very awkward, to be honest, and I tend not to use them on mine. So I just uh, leave them wound all the way back because I find it's easier to do it by hand. But that's personal preference. So there you go, that's that. The only one that's left to do now is the paint cup seal, which is the large, thin, wide PTFE one. Again, a sort of hard plastic PTFE. And this one slots into here and is a little bit fiddly, whoops, but it will slot down into here and it will sit in the bottom but it's a, it is a little bit fiddly to get it in place and it helps if you've got some fingernails to kind of wiggle it in like so and then just to seat that take your paint cup and just screw that in until it seats and down in there, you can just about see the white PTFE seal going around the edges of the paint cup. And we now got a fully rebuilt and resealed Harder and Steenbeck Evolution Silverline airbrush, which I'm going to um, plug into the compressor and we're going to try out and check and hopefully, fingers crossed on this one, it's resolved the problems that we had with the bubbling in the cup and what have you and it should now spray as intended. 
So we'll be back in a moment. But we're here with the airbrush connected up to the compressor and, uh, and the test spray tin and a little cup of water. Hopefully we pour some water into the paint cup and press down on the trigger and we've still got air bubbles at the moment so what I'm going to do there is just nip up the nozzle a bit that's better so I'd obviously not seated the nozzle quite enough so as you can see now that's air with no bubbles and then We've got a lovely controlled fan of water. And that's the compressor turned up to 30. That's typically as high as I will go spraying any paint. And it's not very often I, I go that high. With this brush being a fine nozzle detail brush, I'm, I'm never likely to spray at that higher pressure unless I change out the needle and nozzle and air cap for a larger one anyway. Uh, typically I'd only spray at that pressure with a thicker paint such as an enamel top coat through that I'd spray through the Iwata on the 0.5 nozzle. But uh, for the purposes of testing we're at 30 psi with air as you can see we've still got no bubbles through the cup and hopefully you can see that there and just as a final little test I've taken it right down to about 10 psi just to see if we can still get a very very low pressure spray now typically I wouldn't go below about 15 um, on pretty much anything that I spray but hard to see but that is actually spraying and we are getting a nice a nice fan pattern which means that you could use low pressures and get very very fine detail indeed so there we go um, I've got a feeling that this is going to be quite a long video once edited uh, for upload because obviously it involved quite a bit of uh, detail with regards to the stripping replacing of the seals and rebuilding but hopefully for those of you who have been looking for a video like this to work through it you'll see that it's not half as daunting or intimidating as you might think to do a seal replacement and a service on a double action airbrush and um, and you can see obviously that the the results are well worth it as it gives you a brush that behaves as impeccably as you would expect a high quality airbrush to behave so I hope this was useful for you and apologies if uh, if it is a little on the long side but uh, I hope it was useful and um, the next video up is either going to be the the next build which is which will be a car as I've already mentioned or um, the start of a paint review build which I need to do as well but hopefully you'll join us for the next one we'll see you in the next video so thank you for watching and bye for now